Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we're going to take a break from the in-depth theory that breakdowns the analysis that makes us such big brain alpha junglers and instead consider the junglers that we use in order to make the other roles bow down at our grandeur. Except the two junglers I want to talk about have a lower than 1% pick rate but an above 50% win rate, essentially your hidden OP champions. And now last time we did this it was Silas and Pantheon, their win rates weren't so good but they were really specific to the higher tiers of play. Because as with last time I'm sure you were all very astute individuals Individuals, you can see I'm talking about Morgana and Poppy. Now yes, they have been on the radar for a little bit, but their play rate really hasn't increased and the power they hold in the jungle is actually quite supreme. Not only in solo queue, but maybe even in organized play, such as your clash games, or if pro players and coaches can expand their vision to be greater than a keyhole, maybe in that arena. So obviously I don't want to waste your time, please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy this video and want more. And now without hesitation, let's begin. Now I will start off with Morgana and I will speak more generally about her approach, what you need in terms of runes, itemizations, and I will show you highlights from a game in terms of playstyle, but with Poppy I will actually show you a short gameplay breakdown just because the power of that pick in terms of 1v9 and solo queue is really underrated. Now to focus on the Angel of Death, obviously we want to consider how the first clears work out, why would you even choose this? Now in terms of first clears for junglers, it's always about how fast you can do it, how healthy is your clear. When can you make an impact on the map? Can you counter jungle? Can you AFK farm like a Karthus? All these questions determine if you can actually be a good jungler. In terms of Morgana, well, as you can see, you can start on the Raptors, do your red, do your Krugs, go back to base, buy a machete, now head to the bottom side, already look to get scuttle control, blue control, and look for gank impact. Alternatively, you can start Raptors into red and then head down to your Wolves, Blue, and Grump, depending on the order of how you want to clear. The point is the healing and the damage from that W means that you remain very healthy. The cooldown refund is really nice for the early clears. It's not too fast, it's not too slow, it lets you have time to go and make a gank. As always, you do want to be very cautious when facing other meta junglers, start on the opposite side, keep tracking them. None of that is different. The thing about Morgana is that Q. One well-placed Q at a level 1 rank is 2 seconds of stun time. Now imagine that coming from over the wall against a gank. Now imagine you have a Blitzcrank or literally any champion with follow-up CC. That's absolutely devastating. Look, even Ezreal can't even arcane shift and weasel his way out of the situation. And you would have seen the runes we take for this are Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Into Ravenous Hunter, Heal Yourself, Get More AP, Get Some Harvest Stacks, Make the Tormented Soil, Torment the Souls of the Enemy Laners and Junglers. And the thing is, with a good early clear, with a good lane that has chain CC, you can literally take out any single champion. And as we all know from mid lane Morgana, the damage from a W max and full AP build is quite devastating when you get caught in any sort of CC situation. Now the reason we have this particular ability max, 3 points into W and then max Q, is purely because the damage from the W needs to increase a little bit, there's no benefit to maxing it in terms of CDR, it's just so you can clear the jungle very very quickly and then look to gank a bit more. Any more than the 3 points in W is kind of overkill in the jungle once you have runic echoes, and as a jungler you really want to try and maximize your CC spells for ganks and for fights, and thus this is where the Q comes in. A max range Q on Morgana is a 3 second wait time, or in other ways enough time to go to the toilet, do your business, read the funny pages, and come back. The Black Shield is great utility for your team, so does the ultimate. Essentially, all you're really trying to do is give yourself a hybrid of a support and a mid Morgana. More golden damage than a support, but all the roaminess that you don't exactly always get from the mid lane. In terms of playstyle, you're looking to do the same kind of thing as any other jungler. A lot of people say, hey, what about this pick? Do I play differently? No, you're a jungler. You do jungling things. You jingle, you jangle, you gank, you invade, you secure dragons. You do literally everything the same as if you were any other jungler. The only difference is you're now a mage, and with Karthus being nerfed in the next patch, minus 10 movement speed memes, having yet another AP option when your mid laner refuses to go anything but Yasuo, is only going to aid in your quest to, you know, win. Now obviously in terms of itemization, the games these days don't really go to full builds. If you have a full build, it's kind of unique. And essentially the fundamentals are get your runic echoes, get your sork boots, make sure you have a zonias in your build. If the game is going very very well and you don't really need that zonias super soon, you can afford yourself that Leandris or maybe even a Morellos if the anti-heal is vital. I don't actually mind picking up a Dark Seal on any AP jungler, especially if you get a good few ganks early. And then you round that out with a nice decap and maybe a Void Stuff. Full on damage, hit a Q and watch them all burn. Now I like to play a lot of Zyra jungle, you know this. My approach to building is very very similar, but after trying Morgana jungle and obviously playing a lot of Zyra, I'm just thinking, so if I like Zyra jungle and I want to win, why don't I just play Morgana? The pick is very underrated. You move around the map quickly, your lockdown CC in the early game is fantastic and in terms of those mid game late game fights I find myself having a lot of good dragon control the tormented soil heals and regenerates very very quickly you don't need as much assistance in terms of securing dragons and heralds as you would with other off meta choices 
And as such, in the mid to late game phases, you can find yourself as an engage tool, a pick tool, or simply a peel tool. You have all these options to you, as you would with any other jungler or support player, but that Q binding just adds so much more usefulness to many other off meta picks in terms of helping you gank. The W in the Tormented Soil allows you to camp sequence and farm faster than TSM rinses through its junglers. And you know everyone likes to talk about Echo's ultimate as a get out of jail free card. Well now you have Black Shield that can help all your teammates avoid committing Papega. And that's my honest opinion. I don't really know why it isn't getting more popularity. I understand Morgana can be a more niche choice. But she's decently popular in the support position. And the decent clears and the safety of her Q basically for disengage as well as ganks really should entice you to consider picking it up. The win rate is good. The builds are spicy. And the skins are, well, you know. And if you would prefer a more hammered approach rather than finesse, Poppy is here to serve you. Granted, this is the second best hammer in the game, but while Orns is maybe better, it doesn't exactly do as much from the jungle. Whereas in 10.5, Poppy's hammer shock maximum damage against non-champions was increased, and all of a sudden her clear speed in the jungle was also increased. And with that in mind, Afrika's spirit actually is known to pick weird things in the jungle from Lulu to, well, I guess Poppy. He has been spamming it to a decent degree in solo queue. As such, we have one of his games where he totally obliterated the game. And this is where I think Poppy has an extreme usefulness in the higher tiers of play as an added choice they should think about playing. Now, as you can see, Spirit is starting blue into Grump. Q into E so you can make sure you pin that Grump against the wall just the way he likes it. Don't forget to pick up the shield, the buckler from Poppy's passive to give you a shield to protect you against the acidic touch of the Grump's tongue before he will head to the wolves. Now her clear can actually be quite a lot slower than a lot of junglers and that's why you should really look to have an active early game. Think of it like the Pantheon Silas in the last video, you know you need to understand that you cannot AFK farm, that you need to be active, get yourself fed, and as such, you saw the Hail of Blades room page pop up. This is the one that Spirit actually uses every single game. Electrocute is more common and has a very similar win rate. You can also go Predator, but I don't recommend that as much because the fight ability that you have versus enemy junglers is much better suited to having Electrocute and Hail of Blades. There are other pages with Aftershock, but this page with Electrocute or Hail of Blades I think is your basic template. We'll talk about abilities as he begins buying items, but you'll see she goes from that blue side level 3 into red into Raptors. Kindred shows on the top side, and this is where the threat of Poppy becomes quite large. That E against a wall in a lot of 1v1 matchups when you have the surprise can be really devastating. Obviously the Zoe is here to rotate and help out on the kill on the Kindred, but it's not just about this particular E, it's about the W as well. Blocking dashes, giving her movement speed, and in today's meta, with every champion having more dashes than Grievous has lightsabers, I feel that's really an underrated ability on her particular kit here. Even though we go from Q Max into E, that W provides so much usefulness. And not only that, with the armor and magic Grievous' passive on the W, she's even tankier than you suspect, which is why you can afford to focus on the damage room page, because her damage is high, her tankiness is high, and even if you're half HP, that shield plus your CC means you can hang around longer than expected and have a very nice unsuspecting lane gank on the Mega Nar. Now with my South African there, I would normally say Mega Nar, but if I didn't focus on the R part of his name, most of you would think I was talking about some kind of Italian water. Go back to base, buy your items, do your raptors, try and gank in the mid lane, it doesn't work out, that's unfortunate. Hold the wave, see the Skull Crab spawning on the top side, and now watch what happens, a Morgana, a Zyra, we might have to simply run away from the situation. Poppy, Hell of Blades, Nar, no problem. W up so we can't dash away, activate your Hail of Blades, smash him against the wall, and I apologize if that Yordle on Yordle crime is too graphic for most of you, but I have to show the people how to do this in their own games. Obviously, usually we look at both sides of the jungle coin in terms of these breakdowns, but we're focusing on Poppy in this particular game. I have kept Kindred up just so you know their relevant location to our protagonist. And that right there is where Poppy thrives, so make sure you're looking for these fights, you're looking for these gangs. Even afterwards, a nice drive around the mid lane, the Blitzcrank does roam up, Chain CC together, get another kill, go back to base. And yes, you will have to give up heralds. Yes, you might have to give up dragons, especially against more meta junglers that can do that very quickly solo. Poppy doesn't have that ability as much, especially when you build tanky, but she does thrive in what happens next. Messy skirmishes, ult disengages, champions with no CC and kite ability of their own, especially once you get pinned against a wall. You can be fast, you can be active, your shield is devastating, your CC is devastating, your damage is surprising. And on top of that all, you're simply going to become very, very tanky. Now most of the time you will see builds centered around that Stalker's Blade Sin Hulk, jump right into those Merc Treads, you can go for a Trinity Force and then full tanky. Dead Man, Spirit Visage, Thorn Mail, Stoneplate, Randuin's Omen if you need or an Adaptive Helm. But what Spirit does is to maximize the ganking, the rotating, the winning in those skirmishes in the mid game around dragons, making sure you do get fed yourself, is sometimes he will get the Boots of Swiftness, but he will always prioritize that Glacial Shroud. 
mana, CDR, armor, very, very useful. If there's games where that speed up is very necessary, we'll always default into Righteous Glory. However, against the Twitches, Veins, Callistas of the world, you know that can be very easily audible into a Frozen Heart, an item people forget exists, yet I love to build on a Maokai for the same reason he builds on a Poppy. Get yourself stonky with the armor, get some CDR, and reduce the attacker's attack speed, you know, while you kill them. Now, as you watch Poppy regain control of a jungle, now do a lane gank on the bottom lane, and begin to stifle, invade, and take control of the map, you'll notice it can just two levels down, I can provide you an alternative to this itemization. Obviously, in the high elos, if you have an off-meta pick, you can't always afford to go full damage and risk everything. But in most of the mid-MMR games, Poppy's damage is still real, her rune pages are still devastating. Why not try out a warrior? The win rate is very, very similar. You can flex into a gauntlet or a triforce if you're really fed and then adapt into your tanky items. Stoneplate again, very, very cool. Boosted entirely by the W passive. However, as you can see from this final fight in the spirit game, the Righteous Glory into a flash, into throwing that buckler with her auto passive, the tankiness and utility can be quite suppressive. Now, in terms of playstyle, you're obviously looking to be a typical tank and fighter in these fights in the mid and late game. You're looking to disrupt, you're looking to ult the right people, disengages her strength, but Chaos is also her strength. You saw this game was actually not that exciting. He basically just rotated to situations, out poppied them, got fed, and all of a sudden, you know, it didn't matter that he wasn't getting objectives because the farming was good, he could invade, he didn't have to worry about being collapsed on because his rune set coupled with the champion kit coupled with his itemization made him nigh unkillable. Actually, scratch that, he didn't die, he was literally unkillable. So while your farming isn't as fast as the Morgana early, yes it does ramp up once you've maxed that Q, the playstyle very much is looking for skirmishes, looking to beat up other people, surprising them with your E, annoying them with your W, and if any champion tries to engage, simply ult them away and laugh. Naturally, there are better fighters, naturally there are better tanks, they can clear faster, they can do more in ganking, they can sort of jungle better, but Poppy as a champion has a very good win rate from this position, I think is underused, and can do very well against a lot of the meta picks that love to dive and engage. So that concludes the second edition of our Hidden OP Jungler series. Let me know if you'd like me to do this whenever it's reasonable, because obviously we don't always have these kind of hidden picks around. But when they do show up in the stats, I like to bring them to the attention of the people. It's what Silas would want, and of course this began with him. So thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share, and comment if you enjoyed and learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well as the Vakayu Gameplay channel where I'm uploading my coaching. That is, of course, if you like and appreciate the content. And then as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.